Too Mad is arguably one of the most funny and charismatic figures in the internet, with his humorous skits and videos being solidified into internet culture. But it's not all funny jokes and innocent skits for Too Mad as he would be exposed for being a creep. In this video, I will be going down Too Mad's unfaithful interactions with his accuser, as well as how his recent attitudes and activities makes him most likely guilty of his actions. Too Mad started out as an Overwatch montage YouTuber while editing those videos with a humorous tone. He would brew a sizable audience and valid reputation that he got to start his own Overwatch tournament, which ended up pretty... It ended all right. Uh, Too Mad, might I also remind you that I am 6 years old, so anything that you have just said to me... Too Mad started moving into making video skits of him inside his house while making videos regarding general topics about the internet in which he made a video about Kim Star's polarizing career and how even with numerous of career destroying accusations, he still has a loyal fan base and reputable connection with other famous figures, like a cockroach surviving a nuke. While the video has a valid message and his current reputation should not sway your opinion regarding what he is talking about Kim Star. I mean, everything he has said in that video is practically true. It's some sort of bitter irony that he would end up as also a cockroach surviving multiple nukes as two men started making videos about him angering bunch of toxic fandoms and invading Zoom meetings. While well, you could argue that his actions are morally gray and he's arguably not a good person for doing this, it's like dark humor. If it's funny, it's okay. So for a majority of people, what he's doing is okay. On June 20, 2023, Too Mad would post a picture in Twitter, or X, about him having a girlfriend. This photo isn't obviously Too Mad's girlfriend and was instead Brianna Gray, an English transgender 16 year old that was murdered in an alleged hate crime. Too Mad would state that he was not aware about the context regarding the image, but it is doubtful whether or not he found the image from a news article or other social media post that was not about the murder. This led to one Twitter user to snap and reveal to the world of Too Mad's personal controversy. On the next day, on June 24, 2023, a Twitter user named Glocks Goldie would post screenshots of Too Mad in the social media app of Discord. The screenshots would reveal that Too Mad has been requesting Glocks Goldie and his patrons to watch graphic and gory videos just for the sake of it, and other disturbing statements. The screenshots would also reveal Too Mad constantly doing sexual approaches to Glocks Goldie, which could have been sexual assault. Glocks Goldie revealed that her old apartment was nearby where Too Mad lived and they met in October of 2022, and Too Mad was allegedly trying to start a romantic relationship and even calling her his girlfriend in a live stream. Ridiculous shit, fuck it, whatever. I don't like cancel culture anyways. So many fucking dudes that you guys stress on a day-to-day -day basis have done that same shit, if not worse. It's common! Common! All the time, it happens. Cause it's just like fucking biological, like... The fuck am I, like the most sweet boy ever, like my parents, I'm not no fortunate son. Which Too Mad has not denied the statements with him denying the fact that his apology was disingenuous. I am, I am literally driving, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm literally in Oregon, fucking Washington, Oregon. Dab, okay, so, apology. Alright, so I can't take the damage away that I've done, but uh, I'll, I'll try my best, okay? Okay, I, I at least want to take responsibility for what the fuck I did, you know? You know, the, the, like the way I treated you and like viewed you, um, this is not like okay. Like I pushed past your, your fucking boundaries just for like my, my own fucking self-serving reasons. I made like, like sexual advances you weren't com comfortable with, you know what I mean? And I, I, I truly do like regret all of that like so much. I never wanted you to like fear for your safety or anything, but like I, I understand it's like how you felt. And I'm like, you know, so I'm like sorry. As best I can say it, you know. You know, it, it was just, 
as if that wasn't enough, you know, I acted like super obsessive after, after you, you know, I realized you left. And I'm, I'm going to therapy, genuinely. I'm going to therapy, I'm working fucking, that shit is tough, but I'm going to it, you know? To, like, fix whatever the fuck parts of my brain or just, like, let me act that way. And I'm like, uh-uh. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a thousand percent sure I'll never do it to anyone else, you know? But fucking... Sorry for making you wait for this deal. resulting in a possibility that the sexual assaults might be true. It's not easy to properly confirm the accusations as most sexual assault cases would happen privately and not recorded due to the amount of evidences of too much relationship with Klaus Goldie of him acknowledging, apologizing, constantly trying to call her, and even signing a restraining order, too much clearly has a former relationship with Klaus Goldie. There's also an ongoing so assault case between Glocks and Too Mad. Oh, what, so you paid this girl, you're dating her. How did it end up worse? When, when, when did it go bad? Uh, oh, well, I was, I, like, I, I, the only thing I wanted from her was one thing, which is sex. And then, uh, she didn't want to give it to me unless I was, like, nice to her. And I would never be nice to her. I was really mean to her. Okay. okay. I'd be really mean to her. I'd, like, walk her outside. Shit like that. Okay, so you locked your your prostitute well, girlfriend outside of your house, and were why? Were, yes. Why? Locked my prostitute because she was showing up, and I, I locked her outside. Like it was not funny, dude. I, I get it. All right, it was funny. It wasn't funny. Okay. Okay. And then, how did you face? Why are you facing charges? Oh, char not charges. Lawsuit. Civil lawsuit. For for what? Uh, she wants money. How did how did that happen? Well, she's basically just saying every time we had, sex, she gave me a blowjob. It was like coerced. Coerced? How did you? Okay, what? That's so you didn't force it. You didn't actually take. Yeah, I didn't like. You didn't take no. nothing. No, yeah, I did do that. I take. I took it. With, I forcibly like put her head down and it, like from behind and joking. I'm joking. Weird thing to, yo, too bad, weird thing to joke about, like, you're being- <laughs> oh, <for that. laughs> Dude. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of videos going over it and you can go check them out if you want a more professional look into it. I'm not a professional in law by any means, so I don't know how this has been going on. But as an overview, Too Mad had admitted to the following where you can see on the screen. But that is more privatized thing going on. I can't really go much deeper in it due to the fact that, that it's still ongoing. All you need to know is how did Too Mad handle both situations and to say the least, he is fucked in every corner. Has he actually gone out of character and seriously apologized? Well, number one, he's not apologetic and number two, he's not in character. The Too Mad you see now with the whole schizophrenia jokes, that is him. He is doing this just for the funnies. This is how he acts, like that's how he acts every time, that's how he is in person. Too Mad is known for being a 
serial Twitter. He posts a ton of tweets every day and it's a lot that it pales into comparison against Dream. Too Mad would post, you know, tweets and it's blatantly unhinged how much he tweets in under an hour. I guess you can call this an absolute mental breakdown, but he's been doing this for months, spamming literal nonsense for hours and hours every single day. I was supposed to make some kind of compilation of Too Mad saying the most dog piled shit and just pointing and laughing at him, but man, there is too much. Does it help make Too Mad look more innocent, much less the sane one? I'll let you be the judge of that. Aside from his Twitter, his YouTube channels have changed quite a bit. Instead of making funny fast paced edits, making any awkward dead space not awkward, quite the opposite actually. Instead of trying to make himself look innocent or at least apologetic for stalking a girl for months, he's just reacting to random YouTubers videos about him. And I know this is just a soul to the wound, but it makes a Pyro Live video even more f***ing boring. If everyone had to work from home, they'd use Zoom. Too bad. I just do all these skits. Basically, all of this started on Twitter. Because of course it's Twitter. Every trap. I'm actually gonna watch this whole thing. I'm shooting myself in the, in the forehead. Tragedy, travesty, plague, famine. It's somehow too mad is a serial tweeter. He tweet. Serial, serial, serial. Serial. Yeah, surreal. Actually, every second tweet I'll delete out of embarrassment because it. Yeah, because you're a little pussy ass bitch. If Pyro tweeted like me, first of all, it would be all inflation. <laughs> it's like inflation eyes. You get that inflation eyes. It's like, if me and Pyro like met, we would be like, I'm trying to steal his YouTube powers through my fucking inflation mind. <laughs> tweet 10 to 500 times a day. 500? If I ever wanted to like live stream that and react to it, it would be the fastest pass to being banned from. From what? Live streaming on YouTube. No, it's not. Fuck. I show speed. Pums. <laughs> I show speed. <laughs> she then went on to. <laughs> to tweet saying, Stop calling me too mad, girl. We were dating. Friends, they never agreed on being in a. I'm not insecure about my face, I look. <laughs> You're incredibly insecure about your face. The fuck? This is facts. I'm balding? Okay, well I'm a dude so I don't have as much of an obsession with how I look. You're obsessed with your body. I'm not as obsessed with it. I don't need it. Cause I make 25 cents more on the dollar because it's a thing called gender gap. <laughs> All of the 30 plus minutes of content is just unedited reacting content that gives zero value to the situation apart from making deranged comments. In the same channel, he would occasionally livestream him just playing Overwatch 2 and making more deranged comments. It's quite clear that he isn't taking this seriously, I mean that's that, that's his entire persona. That's a crazy dude making jokes at every single fucking possible opportunity, but in this case he isn't being accused of just having a photo of Mao Zedong photoshopped as a BTS member. It's full on to assault. His live streams are a sight to say the least. Has any of these actions been made to preserve his reputation of not allegedly sexually assaulting a girl? Not really. In fact, this kind of behavior would arguably make him more guilty of his alleged crimes. I mean, sure, he has confessed many times in court proving his guilt, but not all of us have access to these court documents and we probably don't know a lot about the law. So we tend to kind of gravitate to other forms of identifying one's attitude when it comes to the situation. What makes me believe that Too Mad is at the wrong is compare him to other YouTubers. I'm gonna use Power Cynical and Quite's responses for examples. In Power Cynical's case, he was alleged of having sexual intercourse and sexual conversations with at the time 16 year old accuser. The two were into some kind of furry inflation personas and frequently communicated with each other through role playing. Power Cynical didn't have any sexual interest with accuser and instead was just acting like his role playing mate. But this statement would be challenged when Pyrocynical allegedly bought the accuser a plane ticket to have sex with him, which was not the case. He was just inviting the accuser as well as other people to a public event and other testimonies claimed that they were invited by Pyrocynical to the event and since no sexual advancement of Pyrocynical to the accuser. Now the response video Pyro did was a month after the accusations were made. By that time, he mostly went out to the internet to collect himself and try to find enough evidences and construct a reasonable argument to validate his reasons and the wrong information of the accusations. Quite also did the same thing too, but his situation was much more conflicted as the accuser full on accused him of Quite did the same thing as what Pyrocynical did. He got off the internet for a while, 
collected himself and found the evidences and proofs to back up the fallacies in the accusations as well as defending himself. Those two examples show the case of them mostly being innocent, but them taking their time off to properly handle the situation makes them look innocent, something that Too Mad won't do. Getting off the internet do not reinstate any kind of attention towards him and in turn trying to find ways to at least make himself look innocent. The more important detail is them trying to not reignite the fire of negative attention towards them, whilst Tumad is quite literally doing the opposite. Plus whatever the court case going on behind him, it seems as Tumad doesn't have much time to try and dig up information that backs up his innocence, let alone trying to be the good guy. Because both Pyro and Quiet's situations didn't have the authorities involved, Tumad literally got a restraining order. Tumad has countless more evidences against him than the latter. What is Tumad gonna accuse Glox of being a cosplayer? This leads me to the second point. What has he been doing? For the past month, he has been non-stop posting tweets which are tweets that don't prove his innocence whatsoever. In most cases, signs of professionalism and sheer sincereness make someone feel as if the person is going out of the way of being their usual selves to show that they are taking the situation very serious and properly handling it. Even if they are actually guilty of what they are accused of, people would show appreciation to their honesty and humbleness of owning up to their mistakes. Tumad shows the zero characteristics of what I just mentioned, leading to people thinking that Tumad doesn't care about what is going on, nor remorseful or regretful of what has he been accused of, leading to people thinking that he has nothing to hide and nothing to argue against the accusation, making the general community come to the conclusion that he is probably guilty. Plus with the whole barrage of multiple breakdowns in Twitter, definitely making people think he is not sane. I hope everyone thinks this way that if you make yourself more guilty, you are digging your own grave. Unless God confirms that the accusations are real or false, it does not matter if the accusations were false in the first place, making yourself look guilty will lead the consciousness to think that you did it. Now, no offense to too mad in this section, but the nature of the accusations, the way the accused acts, and the many instances of too mad calling Klaus Goldie his girlfriend leads to too mad to be the actual violator, not to mention his undeniable fact that he wants to be in a relationship with Klaus, even in any other way. Even if most sexual assault cases are private and aren't recorded by a camera or audio recording, there can be other forms of evidence of the accused aggressively approaching the victim so that a sexual interest or undertone leads to a better case of that person who has sexual interest with the victim and having a history of a desperate way of approaching the victim would most likely be the one that has done the act. Plus the fact that the victim knows are friends and lived nearby Tumad by the time of these accusations leads to a hard time believing Tumad did nothing wrong. Now I'm just basing this video off of the online accusations, the public posted accusations by Glass Goldie in her Twitter. I am not basing the video off of the actual court trial. I believe that is a different kind of conviction. I'm more into the views of the internet, not the people close to them or the people digging into the court case. I am basing this off of public information rather than confessions or findings in the court case as I do not want to take a deep dive into it to it as again I am not a professional in law and I do not have any access to these documents. Also there are some cases where the court case sentencing and the general population sentencing doesn't match all the time. In conclusion, too mad based off of the accusations, court case confessions as well as the nature of the progressing situation leads him most likely guilty. It's fair to state that the drama is over when the court case is over. By the time, the two would most likely never have a form of communication with each other and too much reputation would forever be tarnished as being a f***ing creep. With how he acts and how the court case is going on, it is safe to say that too mad would forever be known as guilty for sexual assault. No innocent man would devolve themselves into being the villain, nor anyone smart would not light the candle of negative press towards them, which is why too mad is most likely guilty of all of his crimes. Once a charismatic and funny person that elevated his crazy bigger than life personality to stardom has caused him his downfall from grace of uncancelability. Too Mad would now be another example of a YouTuber that ruined his career.